So would you welcome Tony Palmer to this platform. Bishop, thank you, sir. Bless you. Yes, sir. Kenneth asked me if I would give a little bit of background to who I am, our connection, and what we're about to show you tonight. But 22 years ago, I came to faith, a radical conversion experience, and it changed everything about my outlook and my life. And within a year, I found myself in full-time ministry, working for the church where I got saved. Then I went into Bible school, I got trained for the ministry, and um, eventually I, got, I went into the office in South Africa to ask a friend of mine, Steve Kutsia, who was your South African director at the, at the time, for some ad building advice. And instead of getting building advice, I got a job. Gloria, good, good evening. Well, it was about two and a half years later, and the Holy Ghost said otherwise. And we were sent out to Italy, where my wife is from. I've been married to Emmy now for 22 years. And it's been a lot of fun. Italian wives are incredibly fun. <laughs> I say that with a big smile. <laughs> and it was an incredible time for us because I was born again, spirit-filled, and a evangelical Pentecostal church. Like I said, I came to radical faith, both me and Emiliana, my wife, we had radical conversion experiences. We'd been raised in the word of faith. We'd worked for Kenneth and Gloria in South Africa. But the call that we got to Italy was the call from Rome. You see, while we were visiting Italy, our family, on an annual basis, and we would share our faith with our family, it was hard for us because when they would get born again, there was nowhere for them to fellowship because the evangelical churches at that time in Italy were incredibly legalistic, where women, men and women had to sit separate and women had to wear veils on their heads. And you couldn't even go to the beach because it was considered nudity. So as loving, Jesus-loving Christians, we didn't want to send our family to those kind of churches. But then sending them back to the Catholic church, which is so traditional, that was going to kill their faith. Well, in 2003... 10 years later, 11 years later, I got a call, an email actually, from Rome saying, Tony, we've seen your ministry and we'd like you to share your ministry with the Roman Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Would you be willing to come to Italy? We, as Protestants, we've been praying for the Catholic Church for years. So obviously people are going to back me and send me. And we moved to Italy with nothing, no ministry connections, couldn't speak Italian, some crazy evangelical who'd been called by the Roman Catholic Church to work with them. And tonight is a, in a, is a culmination of what's happened in the last 10 years. And we have a, a very special message. And I wanted you to understand the connection between KCM and the Catholic Charismatic Renewal because the Catholic Charismatic Renewal is the hope of the church, the Catholic Church. I was at a meeting at St. Peter's, um, I think it was about a year and a half ago, it was Pentecost, celebrating, remembering the coming of the Holy Spirit, and uh, Pope, Pope Benedict, Pope Benedict, he said to all the charismatic leaders, charismatic Catholics, publicly, he said this in Italian to them, he said, you charismatics, you are the hope of the church. Stop. That's only the antipasta. He said, and you need to evangelize within before you evangelize outside. Um, about eight years ago, I was working for the Catholic Church in South America, in Argentina. And it's protocol when we go into a Catholic diocese, we go visit the Catholic bishop, and we ask his permission to work among his people. And when I went to Argentina, the bishop that I had to visit at that time was uh, M uh, Father Mario Jorge Bergoglio. And he and I struck up a, a very intimate relationship. I have three spiritual fathers. Um, the man who ordained me a priest, Archbishop Robert Wise, Kenneth Copeland, without a doubt, he received me in South Africa very much, so we, we connected very quickly, you and I. And the third 
spiritual father was Mario Jorge Bergoglio. Because you see, my wife, when she saw she could be Catholic and charismatic and evangelical and Pentecostal, and it was absolutely accepted within the Catholic Church, she said that she'd like to reconnect her roots with her Catholic culture. So she did. And so I was working in Italy with the Catholic Church. My wife was a charismatic Catholic. My children were going to Catholic school, so we raised our kids Catholic. Charismatics, Pentecostals, Evangelicals. <laughs> Jesus was all of those, you know. Jesus is sacramental. He instituted the sacraments. He did uh, the things that was required of him in the, in the synagogue. He believed in sign and symbol. He used it all the time in his parables. But he was also evangelical because he said, you have to be born again. It is written. He was also the contemplative. He was also the charismatic. How much of Jesus do you want? Do you only want one denomination of Jesus? Jump in, get it all. <laughs> so, uh, Padre Mario, Father Mario, he took me aside when he heard about my testimony about having this ecumenical family, and he started a friendship with me. We started studying together, meeting more often, to a point where he became one of my mentors. And I was on the train leaving Rome that day when they announced the Pope. And the Pope was Mario Jorge Bergoglio. My friend, my spiritual father had become the Pope. I got a phone call just after Christmas when I was relaxing with my son, watching a bit of TV. And I grabbed my, my mobile phone. I said, yes, Tony Palmer speaking. And he says, hello, this is Pope Francis. He said, when are you going to be in Rome next? I said, I'll be in Rome next two weeks' time. I have to visit one of my congregations. He said, can you come and see me? <laughs> yeah, this nobody from South Africa who gives up his house to follow some crazy call from the Catholics ends up getting a phone call at home from the Pope. So I said to him, I said, uh, Pope Francis, I can't believe that 